do that one for an episode. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah that's, 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 my face. Yeah. You're right. You know what? Yeah. We're gonna do that. Patton, thanks for coming by. Um, we're I'm gonna wait. do this instead. Oh, okay, that's great. I'm do just you want watch. a face tattoo? <laughs> no. You, well, you should. What you should do is you should get tattooed on your face. Tune in to watch Patton Oswalt, and then like on the. <laughs> this episode, this date, have that tattooed on your face, and then that'll be the promo. Dang it! For the episode, right. that's the next level. Is it Come too on. late? Hey, do you want the show to succeed or not? I do, and I'm willing How to do that. Are you? I am. Willing All right, to do well, there that. you go. Yeah, I was gonna say he, he'll do it. Oh, he would. Oh yeah. I need this show to work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Save us, Pat, and your only hope. How do I look? Do I look okay? You look I'm great. Good. Do I? Sitting down, I just I always look like a. a pile of laundry that's collapsing so I just want to make sure welcome here we go and I'm not Tony Hall How have you been? You know, I've been good traveling back and forth here, London. Ooh. Uh, yeah, I just gave the, um, I was just in Virginia. I did the commencement speech at my college. No way. What yeah. college? Uh, college of William & Mary in Williamsburg. What's Sorry. a commencement speech? It's like, hey, congratulations for graduating. Here's some advice. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I was like, the world is awful right now. Uh, but the way that you're rebelling and, and I go, the world is awful and you're talking to the person whose fault it is. It was my generation. <laughs> generation yeah, exactly. We really embraced making not caring look cool. Like that was our thing, <laughs> but we, we embraced it way too hard. And now there's literally, there's just, there's Nazis running around. We, we, we were so cool that we were, we didn't want to look like nerds by calling out Nazis. That's how bad it got. And luckily, you're rejecting all that nonsense. And so you get to fight Nazis and literally stop the planet from killing us. Okay, use those English degrees. Like, I, I very much embraced how awful things are. I how, long, how long was the speech? Uh, 12 minutes. Oh, really? It's online. It's on, it's on their minutes. website. Yeah. That seems like way more pressure than, say, a half hour for some reason. I know. Yeah, because 12 minutes, it's... Also, what they don't tell you is your 12-minute speech is three-fourths of the way through a very long, oh, yeah. very oh, yeah, yeah. somber, very, uh, um, uh, a lot of gravitas. Yeah, well, I went I went to Olivia's uh, graduation a couple years ago. Yeah. Spoke. <laughs> no, yeah, really everyone. Really? Yeah. Oh, everyone, everyone went up and said something. Everyone in the building. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, so it was, it was that, hey, inject a little levity. But if I injected too much levity, it would seem like I'm insane. If, if I go up there and just say, <laughs> hey, get out there and give them heck, guys. It's going to yeah. be great. Like, they know what's going on. They're going to go, on your way. What's this idiot talking about? So, you know, I kind of embraced that, and it, and it really worked. <laughs> it really did. It worked. I said, but the first thing I said was, I have five words to the administrators. Uh, thank you for this uh, um, uh, privilege. Uh, four words for my um, educate, ed educators, um, I value the knowledge. And three words for the graduates, you poor bastards. And then that's how I started. Because <laughs> that's, that's what you're facing right now. I'm going to say, if I ever get invited to that, I'm going to take cues from you. Mm -hmm. Well, where would you... I didn't go to college, so... But nowhere. what I'm saying is, if you I had to... to school. <laughs> if you, well, then if you got to choose... We're, we're which, all the ends <laughs> of the spectrum here. <laughs> well, if you could choose then... Which university would you give, would you impart your knowledge to, your knowledge oh, wow. of life? Huh. It would probably have to be San Diego, either UCSD or SDSU. Yeah. Yeah. What would you say? I to feel them? probably I'd, I'm more in line with SDSU just because, <laughs> you know, didn't have, I, I had a direction, but I didn't have like sort of a, a bigger direction in terms of education. Right. No, that's, that's what's, mo I mean... I said it on stage that the valedictorian um, shook my hand and brought me up. The valedictorian was like 4.4 GPA. I was a 2.7 in college. I was not a good college student. I had no focus for college, but I had direction very early on in terms of being a comedian, and that is so much more crucial 
in life than just studying for the test. And I succeeded at college. Great. What do you want to do with your life? I don't know. I was so busy succeeding at college. And I knew people and friends of mine in college that were, you know, 4.0s that openly told me the minute I'm done with college, I'm never reading another book. I'm done with all this. Right. It's like, well, then why, why did you bother to come here then? You could have saved a big chunk of money and just gone and started a business. Because it is what I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's what you do. I didn't listen to anybody. Yeah. But I had that direction thing. I early like, on. I'm going to be a pro the hustle. Yeah. The hustle. Yeah. yeah. You, you knew early yeah. on. Very lucky. When I look yeah. at kids now, I'm like, that's the thing that saved me. Because I was definitely destined for nothing. But I was right. like, I'm going to be a pro skateboarder. Yeah. Maybe it wasn't the greatest financial goal to achieve, but mm -hmm. it didn't matter because in the end, you know, even it wasn't like I was driving around a Mercedes Benz or whatever, but I had a roof over my head and I could eat whenever I wanted. And I, uh, and I lived the life that I all, I could still the highlight of my life. Being a pro skateboarder is unbeatable. It's all highlights. Yeah. It was just always yeah. awesome. I remember in 1993, I've made eleven thousand dollars that whole year doing stand-up but the way i was living this was in san francisco and you could still do this i was living two hundred dollars a month um you know apartment with four other comedians eating the cheapest food i could find yeah. not really just buying used clothing and stuff barely keeping my car running but i was only i was only working as a comedian to make money it was the first time i didn't have to have a day job and i'm like i won yeah I'm a success. Yeah. yeah. All I have to do is what I want to do. I don't have to do anything I don't want to do. Yeah, that is living the dream. Yeah, exactly. That's 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 what it is. And then and then if you do start to make money or substantial money, it's just gravy because still be doing the same thing for free anyway. Exactly. And I'm doing can... stand up now and I'm in the middle of hey, getting stay in your own lane, skater. Regular <laughs> <laughs> That's what they we, all want to say. We don't to need you four. That. We don't need you four wheelers up on our stages there. So. <laughs> four wheelers. You stick. You stick to your goddamn empty pools, and I'll stick to my goddamn comedy club. So I feel like that. that's what everybody wanted to say to me when I first started. I like out. how we we would get bullied. Yeah, <laughs> they want to. Oh man, they definitely want to. They're like, "What are you doing yeah. here? You already and they're did good something. at it. And yeah. they're good at it. They're like, yeah. oh, you're just trying to get yeah. a little extra of what uh, we, we've already got. <laughs> like that ain't gonna fly. Like I can tell. <laughs> they yeah. all like hang out late at night, and they're like, you know what? You might be okay, but, it's, yeah. but let, let me see a few more years before I give you the full okay. Listen, nobody, nobody bullies harder than the formerly bullied. Right. And comedians are the formerly outcast and the bullied. And so when it's their turn, they turn it up to 10. You <laughs> yes, know what I mean? Yes. They really do. I mean, it, and I, I've seen it, I've seen it firsthand. And even in so-called open-minded alt comedy in the 90s, oh my God, the ostracization and subdivisions and, yes. and all the weird pecking orders yeah. was crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I've they were doing that. stuff that even jocks look at and go, we didn't do that. That's, <laughs> I mean, I know we were assholes, but yeah. you're diabolical. Yeah. Because yeah, they're really good at it too. Yeah, That's exactly. Yeah, it's all it. mind games. Yeah. 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 We, we've had a few comedians on this show and came out a little bit and it's like, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I love it. Because <laughs> I don't seem, the, I don't think I'm hot. So it doesn't like if if you or like you stay down there. I'm like, yeah, I'm happily down here. I'm not trying to yeah. push past anybody. Like it's a great life, even if you're not doing. Way before I was ever successful at comedy, it was such a great life. You're hanging out with comedians. Right. You're at the spot where the stuff is being formed. Yeah, you're not getting it secondhand. You're working in an office and someone's quoting an SNL sketch. You're with the people that are writing it. Yeah, coming up with it. It's the best. Yeah. That's you know? how I see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every time, lately, it's like you could get, do a lot of spots, and it's like, there's no money in all no. those spots. Like, it, well, I don't even, I'm not even going to add up what it makes in a year because I know it's <laughs> not worth adding up. <laughs> but it's happening more frequent, and yeah. I'm having a way better time because I'm always out there, as you say, sitting there watching the big guns. Because every now and then, it's just Mark Maron walks up, and I'm like, oh. <gasps> No, -uh. what's he going to do? And I'm like, yeah. wow, that's how you do it. That's how you do it. Right. You know, and then someone else is like Bobby Lee. And I'm like, ooh, you know, and I'm like, dude, you're like a 12 year old in here and you're 50. Even afterwards, insane. like when, when you see comedians hanging out and someone's like, I got that idea. Like I did it. It's not really going. And then other people go, well, what if you did? Like you see them tagging stuff and just constructing it out of thin air. Yes. It's amazing to watch that happen. That's the best. You see those minds riffing like right? that. The natural you know? talent of 
Because I could see it so, that Mark Maron specifically was just like, he blanked out. And he just was like, eh, eh, it's probably going to be good. You know what I mean? And I yeah. was like, I'm like, wow, you don't <laughs> you know. Guys are my, you guys are my test audience. You don't, cool. Yeah, you, you don't know. know what you're going to do right now. And then five minutes later, he's ripping. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, wow, you just, poof, you just made that up. And it's It's brilliant. also cool to see a bit like over time. I mean, I guess it'd be hard to document this, but. There's, there have been bits that I've gone up first time I thought of it, and I kind of worked it out on paper a little bit, but not much, because I don't really write. I just kind of do it on stage. So that means you have to go on stage a lot, right? I, yeah, I go on stage a lot, but what happens is you'll see the thing develop over the evenings, over the weeks, over the months, something that was just this vague idea that maybe you had one little um, you know, tag on it, then turns into a whole massive thing. Yeah. But it takes a while to get there. That's what I've... Because at first I noticed people write stuff and it was very intimidating because I was like, wow, you wrote that. And then you said it with the timing to make it a perfect joke from start to finish. That seems impossible to me. Mm -hmm. But then I realized that my angle is more, I have a story, I write it down a little bit, but not details. And then I have to tell it yep. over and over again to find the funny and the bits that are like, eh, I thought that was a good idea, but it's not. Yeah. But and also you, you find what you really find and this drives me crazy. This happened on my last special, and it happened on the special before this. You get a story, and it is perfect, and that you think it's perfect, and then I will record it on a special on an album, and then a week later, I will realize there's a whole chunk I could have left out of it that made it even better. You know, like, like yeah. there, the editing will come after the that fact. You left out of the story. They put in. No, no, that I could, that there was something that in the story that if I had taken it out, oh, would have made it an made even it tighter, tighter better. I'm like, funnier, yeah. damn it, why did I leave that in? Like, it drives me crazy. <laughs> but that happens all the time. Yeah, I'm not at that level yet. <laughs> I'm like, that was yeah. great. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I know, man. When I do my specials, they're crazy. That's, wow. Yeah, I don't what think the... that. Yeah, no specials. <laughs> New sponsor alert. Do you know what it is? Yes, I do. What? I eat it. Once again. Magic spoon. Growing up, cereal was one of the best parts of being a kid, but as I got older, I had to watch out for sugar and empty carbs. <sighs> Magic spoon has the amazing flavors you love, but is high protein and has less sugar. Magic Spoon has a variety pack. Four flavors are cocoa, fruity, frosted, and peanut butter. This pack has zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, and four to five net grams of carbs. Only 140 calories a serving. High protein, zero grams of sugar, keto-friendly, gluten-free, brain-free, and soy-free. Each flavor option will remind you of the ones you used to eat as a kid. Go to magicspoon.com slash wolf. Oh, that's weird. That's the code that works, not Hulk. Wolf is the code that will work. Hulk will get you nothing. So grab your variety pack and try it today and be sure to use our promo code WOLF, it's better, at checkout to save $5 off your order. Man, Wolf is way better than Hulk. Magic Spoon is so confident with their product, it's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. Remember, get your next delicious bowl of high protein cereal at magicspoon.com slash wolf and use the code WOLF to save $5 off. WOLF. Thank you, Magic Spoon, for sponsoring this episode. WOLF. <laughs> and thank you for including me in your last special. Oh um, my God. That kind of went viral, but that was funny. That was a good joke. Well, but it was also, it was so like, let's remind you where you stand on the coolness scale. Like, like I, <laughs> I literally. Yeah, yeah, please do that because I want to watch but, him squirm. It's fun. Well, no, it was, <laughs> no. I, I broke my ankle and it was, and I broke it because I was, I had just taped an episode of um, The Connors. And I went out to my car, and I was taking trash out of the car to throw away. Very I don't dangerous. Like a messy car. Yeah. And I was going. To, I was literally going down the a, a handicap access ramp. Ooh, oh, I, I thought you were going off the curb. No. You, <laughs> well, I mean, it was part of the curb, but it was like you know, a little ramp that takes you to the curb. Yeah. Do you have anybody filming that? Because that's and pretty high I, level. It was. It was so highly ironic. And then I went down, and when I, when I I slipped and landed, and there was a guy like 50 feet away over near the stage doors. And he goes, you all right? Because I heard that. Because my ankle pop, like oh. it made this big sound. And I broke my ankle and foot. And I was I was supposed to fly to Austin the next day. And I was, and I posted on my Instagram, like, well, here I am getting x-rayed and I won't be there, Austin. I'll see you soon. And then I think a month later, you broke your fucking femur. <laughs> his yes. bone came out of his leg. Fuck! 
Okay, <laughs> I didn't know that part. I, all I do know is like we were either DMing or texting back and forth. And it was like, looks like we're in the same boat. And I'm like, no, we're not. <laughs> yeah. Because you went down, you found, you like Jackie channed yourself into even further coolness. <laughs> And I went down like someone's aunt that saw a bird. He did. Like there was no, it was not on the same scale. He did do that. Uh, I was there for that. I was like, wow, you're turning there, this yeah. into a, into there. a inspirational moment. Like every you know, time he showed know. up with his leg not attached and he didn't know. So he was basically standing on one leg, still skating with us and like falling off on things that I know that is frustrating to him because his leg's not working and then not being able to get up. Like he got up, like I was like, you're getting up like you shouldn't come back up to the top of the ramp right. and did. And I was like, you know, he's older than me. I'm like, dude, you need to like toughen up. Everybody We're the needs same to age. What, what's your birthday? Uh, 68. Oh, I'm 69. But when, when were you born? May 12th. May 12th, January 27th. So just a... There was, there was a period where when we broke our bones, we were the same age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we yeah. were the exact same age when we did that. <laughs> That's so right. there we go. But I liked when you said that because uh, when you said we're in the, I said we're in the same boat. I, You know, it's it's a big boat. It's a big boat. So we can be but, in the same boat. But, we're different but, cabins. But can we say that you're up on the Lido deck and I'm down in, <laughs> okay. I'm down in okay, steerage I'm sipping, dancing I'm with Leonardo champagne. DiCaprio. Yeah. Right. yeah. Cool. <laughs> Doing a weird Irish jig. You're getting you're getting in locked in your section when we're starting to when we're starting to go down. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm getting locked in there. <laughs> but yeah, it was it was and, and also but I uh, but hold on, you showed up to the screening of Until the Wheels Fall Off with your cast. With my cast. So I was thank you for that. I had my little uh, air thing. Yeah, because that was the Cripple Brothers were the, it, at well, the event. Well, yeah. no, the Cripple Brothers weren't because I was still hobbling around and this dude with his Stylish cane, which I'm sure yeah. had a sword in it. No, um, yeah, did it? Does no. it? Did, oh, it didn't. Um, it, it had then, a hawk head on it, though. Yes. Get did it? it? Hawk head. Oh, yeah. gorgeous. Yeah. And then you you skated, you did a vertical that night. I didn't. You, no. I thought you did no, some skating. No, no, no. I went up on the deck. slid I down watched. the ramp. Yeah, I slid down the ramp. Oh, you no. slid. Oh, you, but you didn't. Okay. That was yeah. terrifying. That, that, was, that was my first full day with without crutches. You know the bit that you don't know about that is when you got wow. up on the top of the ramp and you look and you like grab the coping to slide down it. I was standing next to people that work for you. Oh yeah, they weren't very happy. <laughs> they're they're just, generally just hear this. Oh, and I, I looked at everybody. Yeah, they're generally like, not okay. happy with me. I would say. I found it to be very amusing. <laughs> Quite often, they're not happy with me. I would go to the ramp sometimes, and they go, "Jason, he's out there right now." And I'm like, "What do you mean? Who's out there right now?" <laughs> Tony. Eh? And? And like, why I do what? Go. But, you know, just make sure. I'm like, make sure what? <laughs> yeah, what, what do I do? <laughs> you want me to tackle him off the ramp? Like, I don't... You know, I want like, to hear that conversation. I want you to convince me to be more yeah. safe. That's what... Yeah, and I was like, you're want, picking the I wrong guy. Know how it goes down. <laughs> I'd be like, dude, you got it. Legs solid. Yeah. But my immediate reaction would be like, who put you up to this? Yeah. Tell Charles Manson to go out and, and tell that guy to calm down and stop acting <laughs> so crazy. <laughs> just, exactly. just chill him out yes, a little that. bit. Yeah, go chill him out. <laughs> I, you know, Man. what was amazing about that documentary, uh, we're talking about comedy, you know, people like Jay Leno and Jerry Seinfeld, that generation that came up, there was not the infrastructure of comedy clubs. They had to kind of make it up by themselves. Steve Martin had to just find areas, opportunities where could, they could go up and do stand up, but there wasn't this network. It wasn't a business. And so watching that documentary was like, oh, I kind of only know skateboarding as the established sort of thing that it is now, but you guys just made it up from nothing. You had to just make it up. Yeah, it just wasn't it, there. It didn't feel like, well, it definitely didn't feel like somehow we, we have to create this. We have to make an industry. It was like, no, where can we skate? Well, there's a ramp in the Palm Desert. Okay, we're going there. Yeah, but like there wasn't, what I'm saying is there wasn't, there weren't skateboarding stores where you go buy no, your no, no. starter kit of equipment. It's right, like, right. I'm gonna borrow my brother's knee pads from soccer. I guess I, went to, I got. Call, you know. I went to a water ski shop, and in the back there was a skate section where a guy told me about a guy in America named Tony Hawk that could do finger flips, and I'm like, no, <laughs> <laughs> no, that doesn't no. add up. What do you mean finger flip? He's like, he goes in the air and he flim, flips the board, <laughs> and then he grabs it again on the nose. I'm like, nah, that's not how that would work. <laughs> And then the magazine came a couple of months later and we we're all in the back of the surf, of the water ski shop. <laughs> water skis. And there it was. And I was like, no way. And then somebody, and then the same guy was like, there's a guy in India that can do like Japan 540s. And I was like, that doesn't sound true. But he was telling the truth about the Tony Hawk finger flip. 
I love the idea. I would love it if that if that water ski shop guy was like, look. This stuff with the skateboard, it's all fine and good, but water skiing yeah, well, forever. Yeah. This is this never going to take off. He this is the that. future. Yeah. yeah, he thought he had a yo-yo section in the back. <laughs> yeah, for that, sure. I, I mean, there was a lot of skate shops were like that in the '80s, especially hybrid. Just, yeah. Uh, oh yeah, we're a whatever store. Because well, book they got to hedge their bets. They don't store. know what's going to make it. Of course. Yeah. 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 There was that. I remember I was talking to Colin Hay, the lead singer of uh, Men at Work, who has nothing but insane stories, but. He told this great. I never, because I never, never knew this from his perspective. He goes, everyone talks about you know that band. They're Aussie. <laughs> they're, um, <laughs> uh, um, I'm not supposed to cuss, but fuck you, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but he said in the sick. Everyone talks about the British uh, Beatlemania. It was Beatlemania. He goes, it wasn't Beatlemania. It was British Mania. That first year, it was the Beatles and the Dave Clark Five and Freddie and the Dream, like. It was all for one year. They were all the same. They no one knew, and then it took a couple of years for people to go, "Oh, we're just going to have the one hit, and the Beatles are going to keep." Oh, okay, I got it. Like, like <laughs> they don't know what you don't know what's going to prevail and what's going to you know leap off. It still had that fun kind of pub tavern skiffle sound to yeah. it, and the Beatles just started expanding. And they're like, "Okay, I guess we're out." Um, that's that's where this is going, you know. And then it just became Beatles or Rolling Stones, and both of them just kind of stayed even. Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah, it's similar to those guys in the 80s. It was like Tony Hawk and Christian Hosoi were doing it where it was like, every, we loved everybody else that was underneath them, but it was like, who's... But I'm also, I'm also sure there was some champion water skier that yes. no one remembers now. They're like, Tony Hawk, and then, there, you know, um, uh, Fran Humpeldink is, we don't know. We don't he's know really which good. one's going to yeah. be. He's good. Yeah. He can put a dude on his shoulders. Yeah. Yeah. He's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> And that's what the kids are going to want to come out. He wants water ski around Jaws. <laughs> <laughs> he jumped a shark yeah. like Fonzie. Oh my God, I wonder if water skiers are like, Happy Days ruined our whole thing. Yeah, yeah. right? <laughs> that's it. Once he did that, it was Thanks, over. Thanks, Fonzie. He jumped a shark and for these, everything and everyone. And then these yeah. goddamn street skaters. Yeah. <laughs> Every time I... Because when you think about it, skateboarding, <laughs> did eat them. old water skiers. Because water skiing went to wakeboarding because yes, they were like it did. sideways, man. Because I used to water yeah. ski when I was a kid. And I always wanted to, I was like, the single ski is cool. And I would jump the wake and grab it indie, like a, like a skateboard. And I'd be like, you know, it'd be better if my feet weren't pointing straight. Like if they were sideways, cause I was skating. And then I saw it on TV, oh, like, Hey, wow. skateboard skiing. Of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And then we went wake skating on wake. the Hawk tour where all the, the Tony Hawk. Wake surf. A, wait, sorry. Yeah. Is that what you call it? Wake surf without the without a with without a wakeboard, but with no bindings. Right, and and you're not holding onto a rope. You are you're holding used... onto the rope. But I've seen people wake oh. surfing where they don't wake. use. Yeah, the yeah, rope. but they... wake, wake skating is what you're talking about. Yes. Okay. okay, yes, that's what it was. But at the time, I didn't know it existed. So we get out of the bus oh. and we're going we're going wakeboarding is what I think. And I'm like, cool. I never wakeboarded, but I water skied, so this is going to be great. And then all of a sudden, it's like, here's your board. And I'm like, no stress. This is like a skateboard. I like that better because you can bail. <laughs> Right, because you're more of a skateboarder. But yeah. It is way harder. But you like the story. I took a friend. A, I'm not. I'm not going to say who it is, but a, a friend of ours, his wife, said um, she she could wakeboard. She wanted to start. She said she started wakeboarding, and I had a boat at the time. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, let's go. Bring him. Like, let's go wake wakeboard. You hadn't sure. wakeboarded. I had sure, but right. but she said, oh, I just learned. I want to go with you guys. Got it. Okay, cool. And. I, I don't know her as the most active person, but yeah. I was like, that, yeah, I'll take you, sure. And then every time she got up, she went sideways and held it sideways like she was water skiing. Yeah. But she's on a wakeboard. But didn't straighten the board. No. And then an edge would catch and she would go, fall on her face over and over and over. She never straightened the board out. You didn't say anything? I tried. She just didn't want to. And at some point I was like, this is abuse. Like, yeah. <laughs> we got to stop. She, this isn't working. She's like, hey, Tony. Drown me for an hour, in and the also lake. The, each each end has a little fin, right? So if yeah. she turns it sideways at all, it wants to go oh, straight. Oh yikes! And then she would just eat shit. But was, she would fight it going straight. She would fight it and just stay straight. And I was I was just like, this is I feel weird, dude. You know my butt is killing me. I didn't know that. Remember when I flew in the air the other day and, uh, oh, and, yeah. and <laughs> rammed a metal <laughs> yes. pole up my? You know I what can help? What? Electrolytes. I heard that they're good. Element is a tasty electrolyte drink mix. I've got them. Everything you need and nothing you don't. I got them in my bag right now. I have them just to put in water. So it has lots of salt, 
No yeah. sugar, contains science-backed electrolyte ratio, 1,000 milligrams sodium, 200 milligrams potassium, 60 milligrams magnesium, and none of the junk. That's right. No sugar, no coloring, no artificial ingredients, no gluten, no fillers, no BS. Element is perfect for anyone, including people following a keto, low-carb, or paleo diet. Electrolytes are very important for your body, including the conduction of nerve impulses, hormonal regulation, nutrient absorption, and fluid balance. Uh -huh. Yes. I didn't know that. When you sweat, the primary electrolyte lost is sodium. Athletes, are we athletes? Yep, fully. High five. Fully. Can lose up to seven grams per day when sodium is not replaced. Seventh greatest mega ram skater ever. <laughs> and losing seven grams per day. <laughs> When sodium is not replaced, it's common to experience muscle cramps and fatigue, which yeah. you know well. I'm fatigued a lot, Tony. Ever since I started using Element regularly, I have felt so much better. Element is used by everyone from professional skateboarders, like me, one of the greatest of all time, and athletes like us. Wait, yeah, he's pretty good too, but I'm freaking awesome and to everyday moms and dads. We're also oh, yeah. everyday dads. I'm a, I, I no, could be a mom. Everyday, but I could be a mom. Oh, okay. Sometimes I'm like a mum. Mr. Mom. I took my kids to Little Mermaid. That's pretty mummy vibe. That's a dad thing to do though. Either way, you're a good parent. Yeah. There you go. Right now, Element is offering our listeners a free sample pack with any purchase. That's eight single serving packets free with any Element order. Get yours at drinkelement.com slash wolf. Man, they love my name. <laughs> you must go to D R I. N K L M N T dot com slash wolf. Element offers no questions asked refunds, so you have nothing to lose. You're sold. And your headaches. And your fatigue. I just love how so many things get invented by people being bored as shit with what they're already doing. Like they master something and go, okay, well, I got this. Now. How do I make this What's harder? What's the next fucking thing? You know, they just keep adding that's, new levels to that's it. That's us. Yeah. That, well, but that's but like, it's to a fault. Exactly. There's so many people <laughs> yes. that are just getting, you know, it was it was jackass before jackass. Just nobody was filming it because they didn't yeah. have easy um, video cameras yeah. everywhere. Yeah. What about surfing? Like the first person to be like, what about if I bring a piece of wood out there? <laughs> like yeah. that guy is a legend. Because I remember I've seen video or not video photos and because surfers are like they respect their elders. Like yeah. when they have an yeah. award ceremony, there's like a 25 year old guy that's preaching how legendary this 80 year old Hawaiian <laughs> guy is. And I'm yeah. like, I've never seen that in skateboarding. Like we're like, man, you're not cool. Well, like <laughs> <laughs> you're over yeah. now. Like yeah. Except, yeah. you're 34, you're done. Yeah. Um, I don't want to oh, yeah. hear it. It's yeah. changing, but it's not like surfing. Well, surfing also must have been that thing where I, I can I can totally see someone looking at a piece of wood and going, well, wait, I could just lie on this and float. And then we ride the wave and that'll be, and then somebody thought, well, I'm going to stand on that thing. Yeah, right. Like, what was that moment like when he was like, I'll stand up and do this. No, it's the same as skate. Like no one cared really. Yeah. You really? Know, in that moment, it's like, <laughs> cool. What do you think of these people that there was that documentary hundred foot wave where they go yeah. down. Nazare. Yeah. And he, and he, and he surfs the hundred foot. Is yeah. that just another, is that, like the far end of the spectrum of like, I'm so bored. How can I almost <laughs> die? That's a weird angle. How can no, I but almost that, die? The chase of the biggest wave has always happened. Mm -hmm. And as, as not because you're extremely bored, because you want to catch the. It's biggest just like wave. what's the biggest, heaviest wave, and then at some point they realize, well, you can't paddle into the bigger, bigger waves. So we have to get the speed beforehand. We get towed in, and then once that, once that opened up new doors it was like oh now we can go this big with it and then it got even crazier but yeah. i'm just thankful that they have those inflatable suits now yeah you know because that's what oh yeah they to, to, to they had bring them to the top yeah there were so many tragedies oh with God. with the surfers and then now when if they go it'll inflate and bring them to the top but doesn't i need that on. in like three foot waves yeah, yeah. Uh, look i need that when i go into a mcdonald's like, <laughs> i need something that will inflate and pull me out before i order four egg mcmuffins that at, at is nine handy. in the morning that's what i need we america needs that <laughs> yeah we all need that um wait a minute if, if that thing is inflating and you're you're you've been driven that deep into the water by the way do you do you get the bends coming up not that there? deep oh not that deep okay yeah. i don't I, no, because the wave pulls the. Yeah, I don't think you're going thirty meters or anything. Yeah, you okay. gotta you okay. gotta go like yep yeah, meters. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. I'm trying to translate everything. No, I I just for everybody that's okay. three feet. Right. Thank you. Is the next? <laughs> oh, you mean one meter is three feet? Yeah. Sorry. Yes, Is you. the next step gonna be people that track like 
earthquakes off the coast of Japan and then wait for tsunami. Oh, they do oh, they that. Did that. They oh, already yeah, yeah. do that. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, They're yeah. tsunami surfers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, they and they they just know there there's a, there's a, there's something brewing here in the world and it's going to reach this area at this time and they fly there and they yeah. maybe not you know, tsunami. Or, yeah. Well, but like out further where there's going to be a giant swell. These guys know all about that. Wow. Yeah, and it's crazier because. They're like, dude, bros, but they yeah. scientifically know where the yeah. swell is. And it's like, wow, dude, that is- Dude, I, bro, catch a flight. It's yeah, Antarctica. Yeah, 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 I'm like, that's like a pimping move, but you're like, dude, yeah. no way. And then, yeah. and then you know where the wave is. It's like, what? How did you figure out the wave is? Well, like, because based on the ComSat reading, it's apogee is going to hit at 3.7. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And if you follow Bernelli's law, yeah. in that, you're like, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, yeah. it's impressive. It's always- Mind blowing to me. With the <laughs> yep. anyway, I'm gonna have some edibles and uh, yeah, see how the, you, yes. see if the math works out. I guess I took some man. edibles and I got math. on the wrong, I went to the wrong airport for but the they, flight. You know, they will they, they will chill the too. They get on the wrong plane. Yeah. Oh no, dude, T Tahiti. Like yeah, they're not gonna know. Let's put it this way: I, I've I've done a few events that I was supposed to do with Kelly Slater, mm -hmm. and Kelly didn't show up because there was a swell and. Oh, and off out. he went. Yeah, actually, one time say, I filled in for him. I thought you were going to say because he ate edibles. And no, 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 no. Like because they're right. just chasing the swells. Like right. that's it. And, and actually, oh, one time I filled in for him. Delaware. I wanted to go to North Carolina. <laughs> oh, man. How's the surf here? Yeah, how's surf here, man? <laughs> Are there any? Is there any good surfing on the the east the, the on the Atlantic coast? Yeah, I mean Kelly Slater's from Cocoa Beach. Oh, okay. So he, so there's good. It, it can get good. It's it it's not as consistent, obviously. Right. Um, Do these guys and, ever track like hurricanes and try to surf in hurricanes? Does that yeah. ever happen? Yeah, I mean, because the hurricanes will. Yeah, will make insane. Well. Oh my god. Um, I love that. He could do the weather when he retires. <laughs> <laughs> you you want to yeah. work for one of them? Dude, you know a lot of pay, <laughs> and you got you got to wait around a lot. But yeah, I'm I will not be doing that. No. <laughs> what what? When is someone going to invent? A weird, like like an inflatable suit, but it keeps you from harm, and then goes out during into Tornado Alley and tries to get picked up by an F five, and then survive that. When when does that happen? Surprised like, it hasn't. Yeah, like when does someone invent that and that? Be, and then you you just snap, put a GoPro on it and you and you film yourself. What would you rather do, that or a barrel on the Niagara Falls? Because somebody made that, right? A lot of people have made it. The first yeah. person that made it was a woman, and I cannot remember her name. But the first person and, that and many did people it, didn't make it, and a right. lot of and and surprised I, they're not selling barrels at water ski shops in well, the back. <laughs> yeah, when it, someone should bring back going that, in a barrel over a I like the idea that'll that, be the new like uh, Hesher bunch thing to of do. dudes just like God, dude, we're, we're doing, doing it. Yeah, hey, I'm doing it in a pony keg, man. Check out and, my keg, bro. Oh my god, think of the sponsorships. Yeah. Monster like Energy. Michelob, Michelob yeah. and, you know, the big yeah. beer keg. Oh, man, a beer sponsor. That's yeah, exactly. the winner. Right? There you, you go. You think, who wants to watch a guy go off the Niagara Falls in a barrel? Yes. Drunk dudes. Yeah. Yeah, not bad light, though. Gatorade. Yeah. You know, just in this big cooler. <laughs> oh, my God. Or, wait a minute, Yeti coolers. Yeti coolers. Ooh. Good enough to survive the Niagara Falls. I feel like, I feel like there would just be a, 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 there would just be a vibe that that is safer. The, the yeah, Yeti, probably the would Yeti be. barrel. The Yeti barrel. <laughs> yeah, I mean, aren't there still smash barrels at the bottom of the falls, like where where people have supposedly? I don't know. Yes, and probably bodies. Wow. Nah. But I mean, the idea that they the, go downstream. I, I think the, the wait a minute. The no. fun part of that and the absurdity is that you're in a shell. That's yeah. That would be safe. I don't think. Hang on. I don't think the first person that went over in a barrel was a woman, but there was a woman who tried to commit suicide and went over the falls. No barrel. And she survived. With no barrel. And it, with no barrel, and it cured her depression. Like, it, it, yes. she came out the other side like, okay, I'm fine. Wow, that is great advice. Which That's is extreme. Yeah. yeah. And, Anybody and, out there depressed, <laughs> <laughs> he's got the answer right there. Uh, well, you know what? If you're depressed, what we say here, do go chasing waterfalls. Yeah. <laughs> All right? Don't stick to the lakes and the streams that you're used to. No. Go to right? Niagara Falls. Exactly. Go to Niagara Falls. Get married. Have a honeymoon. Yeah. Over you go. And then you'll know whether it was destiny or not if you live. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, my God. I, I again, I, I was saying it to be partially funny. I would not be surprised in 10 years if there isn't some fad of, 
creating weird inflatable suits or bubbles and going out into tornadoes and trying to survive a tornado ride. And there'll be all kinds of slang. Like, yeah, what are you doing? I'm going to spend the summer Dorothying, man. I'm yeah. going to be out Dorothying. Really? Dorothy. How'd, 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 <clears throat> how'd, uh, I get it. Yeah. How'd last summer go? I, t- I totoed it. I totally totoed it. Yeah. <laughs> well, don't be a cowardly lion about it, man. Get out there, dude. Like, oh, wow. <laughs> it's going to be all kinds of slang. Have you seen, there is a video of a dude. about it, like Vin Diesel, he lives like one, one waterfall at a time or whatever. Exactly. There's a video of a dude that is. That's what he says. Yeah. That looks like an Yeah. And then off he goes in the barrel. Yeah. One waterfall sorry, at a time. Go ahead. Yeah. No, there's a dude, there's a video of a dude, he's on a hang glider or a kite during a, during a hurricane. And he just, he's on the beach. Have you seen that? And he just gets slammed into the wall. No. So he willingly, wait, he's hang gliding? He he willingly goes out. I think he has, I want to see he has one of those those motorized hang glider type of things. So he oh, goes up. Yeah. Oh, like a gyro and then, cut something. And then he or... just gets taken. Well, yeah. What like what he what he wanted, I suppose, but then oh, he just gets slammed into thing. a building. Yeah. Does does he die or survive? No, but it's just ridiculous. It's one of those like it was one of those viral videos before videos were actually viral. Oh, okay. It was like you'd get this little clip and like what is Remember that? Remember that guy that did that into the boxing ring? Yeah, Fan Man. Yeah. Yeah, and uh and, and then everybody got, tried to pull him apart. Well, yeah, the crowd like I would I'd be if I were the one of those boxers I'd be pissed off. Yeah, but you, you conditioned for that long and some douchebag like go to fanman.com. <laughs> 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 just I'd be so pissed off at him. The hell are yeah. you doing? Yeah, I don't know if that was worth it. <laughs> I'm, I'm not anti. You guys know but... Fan Man. Yeah, it w- yeah, it but probably uh... just want everyone knows name. Yeah, exactly. So oh, okay. Well, then mission. Yeah, I- I'm not anti disruptor, but pick your targets. Yeah. What are those? Yeah. Guys, what 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 are you proving doing that? Not to mention he kind of missed the target. Like if he yeah. had landed in the ring and been like, yeah, you guys are fighting, that would have been way cooler. Right. But he hit the ropes. Mm-hmm. He bat- he ricocheted off the ropes and the crowd the ate crowd him alive. Just took him. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. I was like, man, if you don't get security in there, that dude's got no arms or legs. He ain't making it out. Yeah, yeah, they wanted a, him. Yeah, that's what I want to do. I want to parachute into a a group of people that could not have more testosterone and rage. Yeah. at the peak of it, that's yeah. where I want to jump. Yeah, it was into. like the eighth round. It was like right in the <laughs> like deep in it, just swirling sharks. Yeah. yeah. Wait a minute. Let's not feed these gators for a few days before I jump in there. They look really sated and slow. Let's wait a few days. Then I'll go in there. We did we did talk to a guy who um jumped into a circle of sharks on purpose. Yeah. Please, yeah. Not Were on they, purpose. You see Jackass? Well, I mean, he tried to jump over. He tried to jump the sharks as a joke, but he came off the ramp sideways. And the ramp actually started to sink as he jumped, and then he went into the sharks. Oh wow! And the shark yeah. beat his hand. Yeah, really, his hand pretty was cool. Drop. Was this yeah. a jackass thing or just? Yeah, yeah, it was. It was for Shark Week. To uh, promote jackass. Jackass. Yeah. Shark yeah. Week. Yeah. yeah, poopies. Yeah, poopies. He's wow. A legend. Oh you should be God. on Poopies podcast. Yeah, you would, you would love you, it. <laughs> you would love. Yeah, it's all the, qu- the out right of context. <laughs> I just love that someone just said you should be on Poopies podcast. Yeah. Out of context, you you're going to hear that a lot. I love, I love hearing that. I, yeah. you know, podcast. Eventually, you'll get it and you'll show up because yeah. everyone's yeah. talking about it. Yeah, now that's on your radar and you see it maybe with the, a request. You're don't like, think hey, after the show, I'm going to phone with my agent going, hey, poopies. Yeah. Yeah, I want them. Thanks. Yeah, you do. Smart move. <laughs> Smart move, yeah. yeah. You're going to be huge after that. Would that would go viral. Well, there's, a, there's, a, um, there's a couple of... Uh, Instagram feeds I follow. One's called Ocean Ramsey, and one is I think called Juan Sharks, and they swim with sharks. Yeah. This woman, Ocean Ramsey. You see the lady that pats the tiger sharks, and, and she just like they come yes. up with like attacking, and she just puts her hand on their nose and just gently. Yes, oh. she hangs out with them all the time, it like freaks me foot out. Tiger sharks. Oh my god, she, I know a and guy. She knows them. She names them. And go, oh, there's this yeah. one because she knows them by their scars. Dude, they and- come up and open their mouth at her face. They're, they're coming like to her. They're going to eat her. Five times as big as her. And she no. goes, eh, and then gives them a little pat as they go by. And I'm like, and, uh, you know, <laughs> oh Huberman God. said that he knows her and that I could go there and, and do that. You could pat sharks. That would be, to me, that's the, the greatest thing I can do on this planet. Is, I feel like they wouldn't, they wouldn't see you as docile as they see her. Yeah, but you just she, ne- you stay next to her and you do what she does. It's mellow. She clearly has a way of swimming where she doesn't look like an animal in distress. Right. She almost looks like seaweed. It's some technique she has. Yep. And the sharks come gliding up very slowly. They're never they don't seem agitated. But she also 
Like and then also the guy, I think wand sharks, I know I'm getting it wrong, but they go swimming with multiple sharks. Now your your field of vision is not far underwater and there's stuff coming up behind you. And I, that my biggest fear, I don't know what, if this has a name, it's being, I'm floating in some expanse of dark blue, but I can only see so far. And then something massive <laughs> starts yeah. coming out of the gloom towards me. Yeah. That always, free, giant things underwater coming out of the gloom. That's it. Can't, Pretty fair. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that, when you say that, I'm not like, oh man, you're such a pussy. Yeah, you're what's like, wrong with you, man? I feel like that's, everybody no, should be sure. a little worried about that one. Yeah. But I like the, the idea of the scenario. To get to that scenario, something must have happened. Yeah, exactly. Something already, yeah, something, something already something, bad. Is, yeah. yeah. Like, and also, they're thing, already in bad shape. Well, the thing with like sharks, and, and there's this great comedian named Ian Edwards that goes, there's no shark attacks. They're not attacking you. You're in their environment. Yeah. You're trespassing they're doing what they're supposed to do yeah. a shark attack would be like if it attacked you in your shower yeah then that's a shark attack <laughs> land shark huh? yeah but otherwise you're at fault and that's why like the um the movie jaws and even the movie texas chainsaw massacre are very similar in that leatherface isn't out stalking people he's in that house yeah, he's scared of everything people keep coming in yep and at one point, even he's like looking out the window, like, "What the hell's going on? Why? Why are these people coming here? <laughs> yeah. Don't they know that I kill them if I see them? Like, I'm not, you know." So it, that it's that idea of like, "No, you're the interloper. Yep. You shouldn't be going there." Same with bears. Yeah, in the, in if you're like a fence. salmon fisherman and a bear eats you, well, you took his food. Yeah, what are you in doing? His house. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you out there? Like, if you come to we my house, we have fish in stores now. You don't need to go out there and catch fish. <laughs> really? You can order them on the internet. <laughs> Stay home, bear free. But yeah, that, that even the op there's that there's that German movie Das Boot, and the opening is just the submarine coming out of the gloom, and yeah. that freaks me out. And it's a freaking submarine, <laughs> but it's so goddamn scary. Something giant coming out of the fog. I can't, yes, oh god. See, that's why I want to do uh, it. Nope, can't do it. The I tiger shark swimming towards you is part of me wants so to do heavy. that too because I got to face the biggest yeah, fear that I have. That's why, and I they do night swimming too. Where you go down there with a flash, so you only have a limited beam of light, like that. That's your sight, and then so something moves into it. Oh, fuck! It's, it's I, like it's like you said, curing your depression that'll cure your biggest fear. It's just you go, go you go, you run, run at it. Yeah. Yeah. Was, there, there's all these one of the things I go down these YouTube rabbit holes. I'm sure you guys do too. Um, I love looking at footage from deep sea oil rigs because they have cameras down there and yes. every now and then like massive things yep. oh, will go yeah. swimming by and god damn that freaks me out. Some huge thing. You don't see all of it. Yeah, you see a part of it and you're like, okay, <laughs> nope. Yeah, and yeah. some of those have truly unique, terrifying looks where it's like, that doesn't exist in nature, mm -hmm. does it? I feel it bad was, for some of those yeah. fish because I feel like it's, it, they it, have mm, horrific faces, they get, but they get they're not necessarily mean people. They get a bad rep. No. Yeah, like you see them coming, you're like, ah! But it's like, hey, man, I haven't seen anybody for a long time. <laughs> I live in the dark, you know what I mean? Like, I got a light bulb at you. hanging off me. There's a lot of like, pressure down here. Yeah, like, what face do you think you'd pull if you lived down there, you know? Well, that's why, like, I know that whales are mostly harmless. I mean, orcas aren't, but like a blue whale. But the eye is so intelligent it's so clearly looking at you and acknowledging you and yeah. thinking about you and it's so big I just, it freaks me out I can't deal with it yeah. it freaks me and the if fuck it out. suddenly finds you annoying yeah and then it, it can yeah. just or it can accidentally kill you and not even know it did it oh right. sorry yeah, sorry about that with a swoosh you see those whales that like breach and then there's a sailboat there they're not they just don't know it's there <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, you yeah. shouldn't be out here man <laughs> I reckon, I reckon they doing? do know it's there huh I reckon they do know you it's think? there you think yeah like when you see the ones land on the boat, I'm like, he knew. He's I was like, you guys deal, are annoying. Can't deal with like giant. Also, the fact that only five percent of the ocean's been explored. That's it. Ninety five percent of shit that we don't know what the fuck is down. There. Aliens live down there for sure. Oh, uh, there's there's shit down there. They I the think Meg. octopus are about aliens. the Megs. Huh? The I think Meg. octopus are aliens. The Meg oh, or, or yeah. Cthulhu. They're some talking weird, about Meg know. again. There's a lot of Meg sightings. What? Yeah, let's Google it. There's a lot of Meg sightings. I'm sorry. Is that a movie? You just encapsulated the entire early 2000s. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of sightings of these. Really? Google it. Yeah. Google it. Like that. I'm serious. You just, you just boiled down the entire internet. I saw a video the other day of a baby Meg. Baby Meg? It was like words, 15. Great, is, that like, is that like mini like Meg? Like a great white shark? Nah, because it had weird bumps like a Meg. Wait a minute, what? That's what the shock specialist said in the video. Google it. <laughs> Google it. He's, Google it. He's definitely an expert. Yeah. 
Yeah. It was he a qualifies. shark specialist. It wasn't a 15 year old doing a prank. It was <laughs> no. definitely the voice of a shark specialist. He was a full specialist. man. He had a beard yeah. and stuff, and he was like, yeah. this is a He was reading a script, yeah. and his voice sounded bumps. serious. Yeah, he was never on screen, but his voice sounded very, very serious. The only yeah. shark that has these bumps is the Megalodon, and this is a baby Meg. <laughs> and then there was a satellite photo of a giant big shadow, it's the exact same shape as a Meg. Do the math, read between the lines, Google it. Google it. Yeah. I do. I do Eggs think there are things. Do your own research at the bottom of the ocean that are fucking terrifying and need to stay the fuck down there. Yeah. And what about we mermaids? don't need to disrupt them. We don't need to bother them. I don't. I think mermaids were just horny sailors looking at uh, sea cows oh, and just yeah, wanting yeah. to fuck anything. That, that <laughs> room. Because I just watched a little mermaid and I was like, maybe yeah. they live like real deep, you know? Yeah. Oh man. It, no. I mean, look. That's one of the people go. Well, why do you want to preserve the ocean? I. I want to preserve the ocean because I think if we make the ocean too acidic and everything up here dies, then whatever's down there is going to start coming up and that we, we need to keep that shit down there. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want it surfacing. So let's save the ocean so that fucking, you know, Mothra or Godzilla doesn't come up and eat us. Yeah. Octopuses could come up and like take over. You see them get out of a jar from the inside? Uh-huh. So that means they can oh, drive yeah. a car. Yeah. They're, they're, yeah. <laughs> Next thing you know, <laughs> means they, could drive a car. They, they can open locks and stuff. They can use keys. They get the keys to the guns. That's it. Sometimes I believe that 18th Eight century, guns. in the 1800s, they thought that lobsters, spiders, mushrooms, and octopuses fell to earth on a meteor. They're not part of the natural order, and they just found their own niche. That's not bad. And worked it in, but none of that is actual, actually part of our natural order. If I saw that on TikTok, so, I'd believe it. They just look so <laughs> absurd. It just seems, I mean, it's just, the octopuses are so weirdly, and those those two, that's a creature with disturbingly intelligent, very yeah. aware eyes. Yeah. Like s- sitting and thinking and. Could you imagine being able to change your skin color to match the wall? Like that is brilliant. Be handy. Right? Be very handy. Like you could just not be here anymore and just turn into <laughs> that wall and I'd be like, where did he go? Yeah. Well, great to be on this podcast. From- yeah. Whoa, what the? That'd be cool. Yeah, all this matches the couch. That'd a literal nice. wallflower. A, li- a literal wallflower, yeah. So and what what are your biggest fears? Why am I hosting this all of a sudden? <laughs> I was going to say, I was going to ask you a question, but. Go ahead and ask me a okay. question. I want to know how your daughter discovered skating. Uh, she discovered it for, well, for, first thing, my daughter has this, and I'm not saying this as a criticism. She is, she is, um, she's lethally brave. She, in other words, I would like her to have a little bit of fear sometimes. Yeah. She always runs at danger. I had one kid like that. When she was, um, I remember very clearly, here's how she got into skating. Because we went to a surfing party when she was really little, like five her friend had one of those parties, birthday party, where they hire surf instructors and they take the kids out. And my daughter wanted to go, I want to go out further, we go out further. And so they, they kept paddling out, paddling out, paddling out. And then this seal popped up and was like looking at her. And she goes, oh, a seal. And then the surf instructor was like, well, we got to go in because if there's seals, that means we're sharks. We got to head in. And she was inconsolable on the way home that she didn't get to see a shark. She wanted to stay out there. No fear of it. Yeah. Didn't understand it. So when that impulse and then seeing footage of people skateboarding and seeing older kids doing it she was just natural then i want to do that and now she just messes around with it and just has that mentality of just keep you know you saw when she came down yeah to your warehouse. well also i mean I, I i you sent me some footage i think early on was it at venice yes so yes to start skating and then to go to venice yeah. is brave in and of itself yeah right yeah you know, you're gonna get you're gonna get hassled there. Yeah, yeah. But she or, wanted or to go. Or at least intimidated. You're not 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 necessarily hassled, but at least intimidated because everyone's flying around and no yeah. one's looking out for you, right? No. And but she thought that was so awesome. She loved that. She just has that that's, weird. That, that's next level. Yeah. So that really got her. And, and again, anything where there is some kind of now she gets now that there's the downside of that is if it's something that's hard, but she doesn't see the use in it to herself, then it's like, well, then why am I doing this? Why am I bothering? I'm never going to do it. Like skating, she will keep going and bonking herself because she sees, but I want to get to this level. That's yeah. something that I desire. But let's say uh, math. <laughs> she goes, yeah. uh, it's hard. So I'm just going to stop because I have, I, I'm not aspiring to do any math. Yeah, I don't you're care. Do- you're, your daughter and I are very similar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the other things like painting and art, you know, she was always drawing and some of her drawings suck and then she just starts on another one. Yeah. But it, so she has... 
perseverance for things that interest her. Yeah. Sure. But she has no, she, it, it, she is almost like zen about like, then I'll just fail math. But, when, but you can't, sweetie, because then we, we need you to go to the next grade. And it like, doesn't matter. I don't like, <laughs> like <laughs> yep. You know, again, there's that weird lack of fear of like, I'll never use it. I don't care. You know, so, the, so that, that's kind of, you know, skateboarding is a, it's an, it is an adrenaline rush. It is that, <clears throat> yes, you can get really good at it, but as you, you can attest, no matter how good you get at it, danger is always right there. And that is very, very appealing to, to some people. Right. Even mastery doesn't get you away from danger. I think there are certain yes. things, both mentally and physically, that people, same with chess. There are chess masters that are like, but you can always be playing some amateur and make a bad, you don't, you just don't know. Mm -hmm. And so always having that danger there is, you know, it's that weird gambling thrill, I guess. Um, yeah, I guess there's a bit of that, but there also is that what it provides you when you do complete something that, that you thought you weren't yeah. really sure if you could do it, but you knew you wanted to get there. And then when you finally do it, there, that, I mean, uh, that's, the, that's the buzz you're chasing. That's the buzz we're chasing. It confidence too, though. Oh, like absolutely. When you, when you try something and you're like, I don't think I can do that. And then you persevere and then you do it and you're like, dude, that... A week ago, I'd be like, there's no chance in hell you're going to do that. And you did it. Yeah. What else could you do that you don't think you can do? Exactly. You can apply that to anywhere. That's right. what I keep telling her because she was, oh, she also does a lot of trampoline stuff and she does these flips. That like, helps. No hand flips. I used to but, do that too. But there was a thing where there was, she was trying to do a front flip and she could not do it. And I, so we looked at YouTube videos and kept trying and trying and then then she could suddenly, I love that thing of like, there's something that you can't do. And then once you do it, you can't remember not being able to yes, ever yeah. do it. It was like, yeah. oh, I always was able to do that. Yes, yeah. actually you were, you just didn't. Yeah. And so that feeling also gives you a lot of confidence. So that's what I, now I keep trying to tell her like, this math stuff, I know it seems hard, but remember when you <laughs> couldn't do the flip, remember when you couldn't do the ollie and you can apply that. She's like, but again, I can't get by the argument of like, but I will always skateboard. I'll always want to be in a trampoline. I don't want to do math. I don't care. Yeah, like, I so get it. Ugh. Yeah, why, why be good at math when I it won't always so have bad? a bank account. <laughs> yep. Maybe I'm going to use that. Yeah, but you can use it to take the money you have and make it into more money. <laughs> yeah. No, no one I'll told just... me that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That would have no. been handy. There should be a... I know they're teaching organizational skills. For, there should be some kind of goddamn life skills class in high school of like this is how you purchase food yeah. and keep it fresh yeah. and cook and cook cheap and you know run your bed like just basic shit so you can be like still function in the, the world t-shirt folding class would have been handy for me yes yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly i know you were of the generation home ec uh-huh home ec like what do you yeah. know what that is yeah, oh yeah i did it <laughs> But it was like I can't to cook any of the things that I cook. No, exactly. But but how about teach us how to cook and buy food cheap for the years in your twenties when you have no money? Yeah. That's a skill that kids could actually yeah. use. Here's what you can live on and not get weird candida albicons or <laughs> scurvy. Like so you still have some That's level scurvy. of nutrition. You know what I mean? Yeah. But you're not like I mean, look, I, I when I was in my twenties, I had no money. I just drank way too much coffee. And and Chinese food, I I it was, and then I got this like my my stomach flora died like th that happens when you don't eat well. Yeah. And I had to then read about. it. I was like, why am I constantly belching? This feels really weird. You got to eat some yogurt and feed it. And uh, you know, I didn't. I literally didn't know how to eat. When yeah. I first moved to America, I was sleeping on somebody's couch, and I bought a sack of potatoes. <laughs> and I was like, this will last me like so long because I would just make like really crappy fries in, in his yeah. frying pan yeah, and chop them up and I'd make it. And I'm like, I don't need any money. I got, I got food for months. Yeah. And donuts. You said, Oh, the, the donuts was a splurge because <laughs> I never in Australia, they probably have it now. But when I first came here, there was donut stores and in Australia, there's no such thing. No kidding. So just a whole store and they were so cheap. It was like, Oh they, yeah, they give you a box. Like, which ones do you want? I'm like, I don't want one, man. Like, and it's like well, there's 39 cents. I'm like, 39 cents. Yeah, I'll have that one and that one. And then we, I'll be at the front of the donut store, just go look at all these donuts. You can just get donuts if all you want. No one says anything. They don't act weird or anything. They're like, of course you want all those donuts. It was so cool. I did a movie one time with it. It was a British film, and they had uh, at catering. It was, but it was being shot in America. But it was a British film. And they had um, 
breakfast burritos and all the British actors were marveling. Like, yeah. it's your breakfast. Yeah. But you carry it around. It's all, it's the bacon, it's the potatoes, it's the eggs. <laughs> I, but it's in it. I can walk around with this. I don't have to have a plate. This is bloody brilliant. I like, brought, they never. I brought them to Australia and made them for my family and they all did that. They lost their minds. <laughs> That's amazing. Look at that. Look at Jason, mate. It's all thing. Yeah. It's right there. Yeah, they're in the you whole know? thing in there. You, you brought tortillas from the US? No, I got like a janky yeah. Australian breakfast no, burrito. See. Because they don't have the same stuff. Uh huh. It was. But you can make eggs. You can put black beans in there. And I was like, "Here's kind of what it's like in America." And they were like, "Wow!" But we'd all be having breakfast at catering. I remember later on when it was lunch call, all the Brits Brit were like, "I could just have another one of those burritos." Yeah, yeah. Why are we? Uh, no, don't. Why did they take those away? I, I would have eaten two. Of those would have been fine. Like yeah. they were just. It was like the, the. It was like the apes touching the monolith at the beginning of two thousand one. <laughs> it's all. The breakfast is all in this. Yeah, okay. It's all right. It was a good idea. <laughs> they were so happy. It was a good idea. Yeah. What's been the most enjoyable movie you worked on? Besides Ratatouille. Oh, oh sorry. Well, yeah, Ratatouille was amazing. I mean, it's a tie between the very first one I ever did. I only had one line in it, Down Periscope, but it was the fact that I'm in a movie and I'm sitting on this set and there's Rip Torn and there's Harry Dean Stanton and there's Kelsey Grammer, and here's all these young actors that I don't know, but now suddenly they're all, we're just hanging out at our trailers and talking. This yeah. is fantastic. Like, that was really, really fun. Um, and then also, um, um, I got to say, uh, young adult, because working with Charlize Theron, you really, like, oh, I'm going to be so, I'm going to be such a better actor when this is done, because I've had to up my game, because doing scenes with her, she's ready. Yeah. She's an actor. Right. So I really, I worked with an acting coach and I was like, that was the one I felt the most I showed up prepared because yeah. I did not want to look bad. Do you feel like that life. led to other work? Yes, it definitely, well, it definitely led to like, well, he can hold his own. We can use him in the, you know, for, for the most part, especially in any creative endeavor, what they want to know is two things. Um, are you, uh, are you, are you talented? And then are you not crazy? You know, yeah. because they'll they'll work with B they'll work with B plus and not crazy over A plus and insane. Yeah. Like after a while, oh, yeah. A plus and insane just wears out its welcome very quickly. Yeah. And that's why you see a lot of these, you know, someone like Steven Root, who by the way is A plus, but he's not insane, totally talented. And everyone's like, Oh yeah, Steven Root. Because they've got they've got nothing but problems, filmmakers, a director, a producer. So when they're when they're filling out their cash, they're like Who's going to create no problems? Like, you know, like maybe they have one massive star that might create some problems. Everyone else has got to be easy peasy. So someone like him or Judy Greer, they're like, oh my God, they're going to show up. They're going to fucking nail it. Everyone's going to love them. It's great. And they work forever. So yeah. I've, I've, I've fallen squarely into the B plus and not crazy. And <laughs> show up and not be a dick. Nice. <laughs> yeah. I loved your part in Walter Mitty. Oh my God! I I love that movie. First of all, I, I just I love it. Did you um, consult on that movie? Did you? Um, no, train that, ben? I mean, that was Rodney Rodney Mon. Really? Oh, yeah. Wow. Did uh, he might maybe he wasn't on your scenes? No, he wasn't. My yeah. scenes were. Um, I went to Iceland to be off camera to talk to Ben on the phone. He wanted me off camera talking to him because I'm always on. But the you phone. went to Iceland. But I went to, to shoot Iceland. That. So yeah, I thought did. I think Rodney was in Iceland. I Even though his scene him. wasn't in Iceland, I think yeah. he was still the consultant. I didn't meet him in Iceland. All I know is I got there, <laughs> we fly to Reykjavik, then we go to this town. It's like this hunting lodge we're all staying in, in this town with, and, and I'm not saying this as a joke, no vowels in the name of the town. It was all <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and we go there, and um, one of the crew guys was like, hey, go for out for a walk on that glacier. It's amazing. It's like... Sun really doesn't go down here, and it's really beautiful and great. I'm like, oh, that's great. Go clear my head, and I'm walking out of this. Didn't didn't put my earbuds in. I'm just like, I'm just gonna let this be, you know, my thoughts. And I'm like, wow, I'm actually far away from Hollywood right now. I'm just on the earth, and this feels very zen and very real. And I could not be further away from show business. And you know, I, I need more of this. I need to do this more often. And I see this tiny dot on the horizon. And I keep walking and the dots come going. Someone's walking the other way toward me. I'm way out in the middle of this glacier in the middle of Iceland. And the person gets toward close to me and it's Sean Penn. <laughs> hey, Patton. I'm like, oh, hi, Sean. He goes, I'll see you tomorrow. 
and he just keeps walking along. Like you're <laughs> you you're never going to escape Hollywood. It It'll no. always be there. It'll just that, that kind of. <laughs> it was so amazing. <laughs> yeah. So that kind of. But then yeah, getting to do like that voice, this weird, and because that that was a cool experience because a lot of my stuff was just recorded voiceover off screen with him and I don't know how they're going to use it later and when you see sometimes you're telling a story that you don't realize you're telling until uh -huh. they put it into the and you go oh that's what I was doing yeah so that's amazing yeah that I, love really cool. I love that I love that what you say you, you, you look like Indiana Jones and the strokes and the strokes had a kid <laughs> had uh, a kid I, I, I riffed that one <laughs> I thought so I thought I riffed that I, one. I, I, I knowing you I feel like that came from that yeah, Your mind. I riffed that one up. But yeah, that that movie. I mean, Ben has well, he's always been a always been a great director, but now he's become a truly. I don't know if you you watched Escape at Dannemora yeah. or Severance, but yeah. he's just he went through some kind of evolution. But I think that Walter Mitty was a huge part of that evolution because mm -hmm. that movie is way it did not get the kind of attention that I thought it deserved. Not just because I'm in it. It's a beautifully shot. No, it's film. really, yeah. it's really, and and a good message too. Oh yeah. yeah, that just that thing at the end, like these are the people that are just quietly doing the job. Yeah. they matter. They're, they're the ones, the people. I mean, again, all the stuff that you quietly do without fanfare is the stuff that ends up counting. All the years you spent learning, all your there must have been like the most uncinematic, repetitive. I got to get this stuff down before yes. you get to do the cinematic stuff. You gotta put in the work, man. Right. Oh, absolutely. But yeah. but but also we didn't have that goal either. So it, it was even you didn't more even yeah, you, you didn't know yeah. the cinematic stuff was coming. No, not at all. It's a weird thing to want to pat on the back. It's such a human trait. Oh yeah. I was watching a lion have sex the other day with another <laughs> lion on top of a car that was a, a cage car. So people were in the back. Wait, this is something you you saw live in person? No, nah, it was on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> Google it. <laughs> Google it. <laughs> but Google it. Was, it. <laughs> he was he was boning his wife. Right. And there was a family in the truck. Oh. And when he finished, like he was doing really cool too. He's like biting her back and stuff and pumping her. And they and the family, the kid, the kid was like, whoa. And the lion went, ah, and tried to bite the kid through the cage while he was still in his wife. Wow. And I was like, he does not give a shit about wow. anything. And then I thought. Because it was inspirational to see his maneuver, maneuvers. And I was like, if I could talk lion and I go, hey, man, I saw your video the other day and it really inspired me. He he wouldn't care. Like right. he wouldn't yeah, find yeah. that flattering at all. No, that was, just, that was just a function for him. Right. Because he's, yeah. he's a lion. And it made me think, man, I got to stop caring about what people think about yeah. me. Thanks, now, Lion. He's not going to care. We yeah. went from Walter Mitty. Yeah. To lion sex. I do. Well, that. that's his way of saying uh, he's it. it's making a roundabout way of going, he can only have sex if he can scream at a kid at the end of it. <laughs> only, at the end, he has to scream at a kid, and then it, it, that, that video that's, ruined you. That's I can the tell. validation. That's the validation. Yeah. Lion's like, I ruined that guy. Yeah. I really ruined him. I knew as it was coming out of my mouth, it was a bad <laughs> idea. Sometimes I like the way you commit. presented, though. Like, I was watching this happen. Driving by on Melrose. Yeah, been, yeah that's what I thought. Like, the way you were saying on. it, I was yeah. like, where? At the Viper Room? Where were you watching this happen? <laughs> it shook me, all right? It really, I really connected with this lion. <laughs> Male lions are just there to fuck the females. The females do everything else, right? Don't they do all the hunting and all the... Oh, wow, yeah. yeah that's what I've heard. And the, and the males just... just they're, I'm waiting to pass down my DNA. They eat babies sometimes, too, though. What? Yeah. They eat their own cubs. I think the mom has to like protect no, the babies for a while. Not their own, but others. Nah, anybody. Anyone just wow. if they don't like him so, or something. Wow. There's some. I could have made that up. <laughs> you could probably um, Google the Google answer. It, there you go. Google Google it. It. Come on. I didn't Google it. <laughs> do, you, do your own research. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not research that took me eight years of college. <laughs> no. Do no. your own research. Google it. Yeah. TikTok Google video. It. Fifteen <laughs> seconds. What if that? Had, what if that had been my commencement speech? Just go up. Google it and then just sit back down. <laughs> if you want to know something, yeah. I need. Can I get that Google. honorarium of cash? <laughs> Thanks. That'd be great. Man. Thanks so much. Honorarium. Thank you. That's always a weird thing to me. It's an honorarium. No, it's a fee. It's a fee. Just give yeah. me my. Just, it's money. But they want to make it sound like well, we're bringing yeah. in this. They get. We did uh, in. When was that? Ninety six. We did the closing ceremonies of the Atlanta Olympics. You did, yeah. They they brought they made a half pipe for it. They put Holy. it out on the, on the wow. football field and the whole thing, and and uh, they were like, "You guys get honorariums." We're like, "What are you talking about?" Well, everyone gets. We, I remember we got fifteen hundred dollars to be there for a week. <laughs> um, they're like, "It's an honorarium." Like an, an honorarium, 
Like we we need the money. Yeah. We we <laughs> pay like, me. It's 90, 1996. We're vert skaters. We yeah we're, yeah, like, yeah, we yeah, yeah, yeah yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> but whenever I hear that, that's that's what my mind goes back to like honorarium. Yeah, that's that's not that's not good. <laughs> no, don't yeah. Honor me with a yes. paycheck. Cross my palm with silver. That will be how you honor me. <laughs> I remember um my I was friends with Harlan Ellison and at the end of his life as he was he was this amazing science fiction writer, but he but there were all these like homages and tributes to him and I was hanging out with him one day and he goes, a little less homage, a little more moolah. I'm like that's that was his <laughs> like, like, enough that was his that was that was the author's version of like enough with the thoughts and prayers. How about a little bit of I thought you'd give me some goddamn money. <laughs> so what else are you working on? God, these days. I mean, I'm gonna go back, I'm going back to London. Friday, I'm shooting a movie, so I'm going back and forth to London doing that. Um, and then, uh, which is weird because the writer's strike is happening, but there's no more writing. Like, the script is done, and they were already starting to shoot it. Um, and then what, on the days I'm here, I'm just, I'm on the line. I just march, and and I can't really, I mean, I'm How's writing. your leg? Okay. Oh, it's fine. Foot. Yeah, my foot's fine. Foot and no, ankle. No pain? No. I mean, there's a little, little every now and then, but, like, I, I, I just did this, um... We're still on the same boat. Yes, yeah, still in the same boat. I try to hike every day. I try to go up like Fryman Canyon or, or Runyon and stuff like that. Which so I you really did all love. the rehab and everything? Did a lot. Yeah, all the rehab. Isn't that all fun? The, oh, yeah. Mm. Now we've... Let's just sit. Let's sit on your ass and move your ankle. We get hurt so much mm. that when we get hurt, we start thinking about that part before we go to the hospital. Oh, really? Yeah. Because yeah. I'm, like, I'm like, man, yeah. you know what this means? Like... Not yeah. only is this bit about to be bad, but I know about the rehab. I know about the. It's not you ready know yet. What the process is. Oh yeah. God! It that was my, my first thought when I when I broke my leg. I, I was laying there. I was like, "It's gonna take so fucking long." <laughs> I saw his face. Like, I was like it went. It surpassed the pain. Yeah. Like, yeah. And, saw, and do you already yeah. know the people you're gonna go to be seeing at this point? Like, they're all familiar with you. They must be like, "Oh, hey, uh, Tony, what'd you do?" No, this time? but I do have. A, I have the head of ER of our local really good hospital. Mm-hmm. On, I, I've got his number saved. Nice. So I uh, I texted him <laughs> and he said, if you're in an ambulance, keep going past us and go to the main hospital in La Jolla. Wow. And so I had to tell that to the driver. Like, we, uh, we don't want to go to Scripps Encinitas. I want to go to Scripps La Jolla because he, he set me up with the head of oh, smart. trauma surgeon there. Oh, good. Okay. And the guy said, are you sure you want to drive another 20 minutes? Because yeah. it costs money. Right? I'm, I'm fine. No, because of the pain. Oh, the pain. Yeah. Like, but you yeah. were okay. They'd already given you the, the juice. In the uh, back, it was right? starting, but oh. but it was more just like the bumps and stuff. But yeah, 20 minutes, oh. sure. I was sitting on my ramp for a half hour by myself. It's okay. Oh. I can learn another 20 Having minutes. Having some thinks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, um, yeah, there's a, uh, I, I'm rehabbed enough that I can march, but a lot, also I'm doing a lot of writing. So luckily I'm not taxing the foot too much. And I'm doing. Wait, so you're, you're, picketing and then you're going home and picketing writing and i write well uh, you, some I'm, irony there i have well the <laughs> irony you just is yourself out i am writing should i start protesting you right now <laughs> <laughs> fucking scab um <laughs> i drove up to the to the gate c at radford i was gonna pick it one morning but i made like i was driving in i put the when i know everyone there i'm like is this the scabs entrance i'm doing some scab writing today is this where i go in they're like fucking get Art, you asshole. Um, <laughs> I write a lot of comic books, and I have a comic coming out yeah. called Minor Threats. Not the punk band. Um, but it's about... the And, and the trade paperback comes out June 21st. Uh, and it's about these... Basically, the, the premise of it is a, an, an A-level supervillain kills an A-level superhero sidekick. And now the whole all the superheroes are coming down like a like a rain of hammers on this city trying to catch this supervillain. And who gets hurt the most are the C-level supervillains, the guys that are just like, I have one cheap gimmick, I just want to rob a bank, get a little bit of money to live, rob another one a few months down. So they, all these lower-level supervillains are like, if we capture the A-level villain, hand him over to the heroes, we'll get a little credit in the favor bank and we can go back to what we're doing. Yeah. So that's what it's about. It's this awesome. night where they're trying What's to... What's it called? Minor threats. Oh, that's right, minor threats. And it's the yep. lower level, C level, working class supervillains. How's their love. powers? 
some of the a lot of them don't have powers they have gimmicks oh in this world if you don't have if you only have gimmicks that's what makes you sea level got it so there's a woman called scalpel who's she's basically a crime doctor she's the one you go to that the criminals can go to when they can't go to a hospital got it there's a guy called snake stalker just this big bruiser there's a guy called um brain tease who has this you know he, he's really really smart and really good with plans but doesn't have really a superpower it's almost like the riddler he can't get out of his own way because he always wants to leave clues to show how clever he is. And then there's a guy called Pigeon Pete, but from back in the 60s who just used to have homing pigeons and that's how they would sense. He's been completely, the internet has completely destroyed him. And then the main character, exactly, is a a woman named Playtime who does have a weird power where she can like take, like build toys and gadgets that help her do her crimes. Yeah. And so that shows she's the de facto leader. But they're all fighting as to who's the leader, and they all have their own. So I'm just fascinated by the worlds that little subcultures create and the rules that they have to follow, and especially amongst the criminal world. There are people that, like, in a weird way, I don't know if you've ever watched The Wire, but The Wire on HBO was based, it was a real drug dealer in Baltimore that the cop that finally caught him was like, he was running a really tight, well-organized ship. Like, if this had been a Fortune 500 CEO... This would have been an amazing company, but he was selling drugs, but his drug operation was amazing. So sophisticated, so ahead of its time, and we only caught him on a fluke. Really? So Yeah, so that kind of thing of like, so what kind of systems and what what does honor mean in that world? What kind of code do these people follow? Or is, is it a code when everyone goes into it open and honest about, there is no code and I'll betray you in a second, but we know that going in. Is that a weird form of honor and honesty? So I wanted to just, and also, there's just fucking awesome fights and everyone Hell beating yeah. the shit out of each other and it, it's really fun. That sounds awesome. Yeah, so that's coming out. So Look for it. Yeah. So that's that's what's going on right now. Everything yeah. else is halted because of uh, the strike. That's right. Well, thanks so. for coming in here because we didn't write any of this, so... We're this, yeah, exactly. Hey, we riffed the whole. <clears throat> we riffed the whole thing. time. That's true. I wrote the line sh- thing. We didn't down. even have a research paper on you. There is no good. Yeah, we didn't, didn't even Google go to, you. You didn't Google no, me. But now you can go Google That's him. That's great. Now you Google me, because you do have uh, much many more fascinating facets. I got sent a Google on you, but I was like, I already know him. I know what you. I know what you do. I follow yeah. you. Yeah, Thanks I love your. T- I I retweet your 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 tweets. Because I don't want to get reprimanded for the stuff you say <laughs> and, and say it myself. I just go retweet because I agree him. with that guy. It's him. Yeah. It's this guy. Yeah, hey, man, where, uh, I didn't mean it. Where are you doing sets these days? Everywhere. Where oh, you, I thought up? you said sex. No, no. <laughs> That's what I thought. Well, on the, top, like, on, the, oh, on the yeah, top of cars with families in a mob. Take your pick. Yeah, you There's a lot of cars. Yeah. Uh, right outside if you wish. Right outside. Yeah, I'm getting lucky lately. I got some comedy store things coming up and nice. some improv stuff. So I'm feeling pretty special because it's been a bit of a... Every uh, now and then I get a spot. I, I sold out a place in Calgary the other day and I headlined and I was like, that is that that if you sell out and it's just you, that's successful, right? And they were like, yeah. And I'm like, okay, there's oh, one. That feels good. It felt real good. You did Real an hour. Fun. Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. It felt really, I came around, I told him I came around the corner because I got out of the Uber in the wrong spot. And there was a big line down the road. I'm like, what's everybody lined up for? And then they were lined up. There's a big sign saying Jason L's comedy. And I'm like, no way. That, These assholes are here for me. Doesn't that feel amazing? Really did. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, I love it, man. I'm so stoked to be in it. <clears throat> I did a, I did a little rock club in, in North Carolina. It was me. I had this group called the Comedians of Comedy. It was me, yeah. Zach Alphanakis, Brian Posehn, and Miriam Bamford. Sick. And they had our name on the marquee outside. And I asked them to put, because we had a, a group that was opening up for us and they, and it was, it had to do with puppets. So I go, could you just please put puppet show and comedians of comedy? Remember that thing from Spinal Tap? Yeah, yeah. It was this puppet show and Spinal <laughs> Tap. And then I got a picture of all of us under the sign. It was the happiest. <laughs> I was so happy. And I literally was a puppet show in Patton Oswalt. Yay. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. And I do have a fall tour coming up, but that I will be announcing that later, but doing a tour of all those the city ones. Google it. Yeah. Google it. It'll be up in a couple of months. So. All right. Well, hey, thanks for coming. This by. Was, that was fantastic. And and skateboarding soon with Alice. Anytime she wants to show you the stuff she's been working Anytime. on. Anytime. Yeah. But like I told you, you're you're not you're not the ticket to entry, but she's welcome to come skate. Okay. Ooh, that'll be. You know, Alice, just take an Uber down there. Yeah. By the way, she's also. Maybe not I don't know if you if you if you have Meredith kids or do this. 
she wants to be like 25 so badly, even though she's 14. So any opportunity of like, um, well, you got to fly in a company. Yeah, I'll just fly by myself. But like anything where she can act like she's 20, she will do it in a right. second. Yeah. So Well, you can put her on a plane from LAX to San Diego. I'll pick her there up. There you go. Yeah. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right. Thanks, everybody. Like and describe. Google him. Don't Google him. Yeah, do no. not. You no. won't like what you see. No, 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 no. Oh, some people will. <laughs> yeah. Some weird people. Well, anyway. put the put the safe search on. When you Google him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I don't show up. There when you go. See that. That's it. <laughs> do, Google him. Do a safe search yeah. with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Four hundred four error. <laughs> <laughs> I see.